So what is the truth? The truth is that in the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. The same was in the beginning with God. All things were made by Him, and without Him was not anything made that was made. In Him was life, and the life was the light of men, and the light shineth in darkness, and the darkness comprehended it not. And the Word, Jesus, was made flesh and He dwelt among us, and we beheld His glory, the glory as of the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth. John 1, verses 1 through 5 and verse 14, the capsule of the, go of the gospel. Jesus is the Word, and the Word becomes flesh, and He was full of grace and truth. Jesus is the truth. Thomas was questioning Jesus about where He was going and what was going to be happening and how they could get there, and Jesus answered, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one can come unto the Father except by me or through me. John 14, 16. The truth that you know and the truth that you believe is what sets you free. You can sit and hear truth, but unless you receive it for yourself and believe it for yourself, it does not set you free. And you shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. Thirty years after World War II was over, there were people found hiding in a cave in the Philippine Islands. And the truth was, the war was over. The problem was, they had not heard the truth. They did not know the war was over. And when they would see villagers, they would think it was the enemy disguised as villagers, and they would run away and hide again. The same is true today with many, many people. They do not know the truth. They do not know Jesus Christ as their personal Savior, and many that do know Him do not know the truth of all His provisions for His people. The truth is, God is love. And so we know and rely on the love God has for us. God is love. Whoever lives in love lives in God and God in them, 1 John 4, 16. The truth is, Jesus loves you more than life itself. John 3, 16, most everyone knows, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whoever believes in him should not perish but have everlasting life. Jesus was the Lamb slain from the foundation of the earth, Revelation 13, 8. Jesus was known to be the Lamb from the foundation. God did not search through heaven to find a Savior. He knew who the Savior of this earth was going to be. He knew man was going to need a Savior. He knew man makes his own way, but God takes care of it and carries him another direction, and he sent us a Savior. The only reason Jesus came to this earth was to take on the form of humanity, that form which he created, and he gave his life for all of our sins, past, present, and future. Herein is love, not that we loved God, but that he loved us and sent his son to be the propitiation for our sins, 1 John 4.10. Many years ago, I heard Bob Cornwall tell a story. One day in prayer, he felt in his spirit that the Lord directed him to go to what was then called the Assane Asylum and just asked to go into the worst room and just be there. And so he went and they allowed him 
They took him into a large room that was padded with many, many people in there. And he felt impressed just to take a stool and he took the stool and went and sat in the middle of the room. He made no remarks, no spoken words. He just started singing, Jesus loves me, this I know, for the Bible tells me so. Little ones to him belong. They are weak, but he is strong. Yes, Jesus loves me. Yes, Jesus loves me. Yes, Jesus loves me. The Bible tells me so. For one year, once a week, I believe it was, he would go and sit in the middle of that room, and that is all he did. He would sing that little song over again. Little by little, people started warming up to him. When he'd first gone in the room, they were kind of against the walls, huddled together and, and not responding to him at all. But as they sang, he sang that song, little by little, they started uh, looking at him and, and moving closer to him. And then one or two started singing the song. And as each time he would go, a few more would join in until almost everyone in the room were participating in singing that little song with him. At the end of that year, Almost every single person that had been in that room had been released back into society, living good lives again, with a few and the rest of them that had been updated to be in other places in the hospital. Jesus loves you and Jesus loves me is a truth that we need to know more than anything as we walk in this life, and particularly in these months and years. Nothing, here's another truth, nothing, no thing can ever take his love from me. For I am persuaded that neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor principalities, nor powers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor height, nor depth, nor any other created thing shall be able to separate us from the love of God, which is in Christ Jesus our Lord. Romans 8, the last part of 37 through 39. The truth that I share with you today is that Jesus loves you more than life itself. There is nothing, no thing that can ever take his love from us. There is nothing you have ever done, are doing, or ever will do that can take his love from you. Does that give you a license to sin? Absolutely not. One of the things I've learned in my years is that people don't need a license to sin. When they want to sin, they're going to sin. But the second thing is that the word of truth tells us God demonstrates his love towards us in that while we were still sinners, we weren't living right at all. We were doing all the great things that sinners do. And the Bible tells us that while we were still sinners, Christ died for us, Romans 5, 8. I have followed God all my life. I was born in the parsonage that was built on the back of a church. I was raised in a pastor's home. I married a pastor. And when my husband went to be with the Lord in 1999, I became a pastor and I pastored for nine years. But with all that pedigree of being in the church most of my life, today I am understanding more and more the truth that Jesus loves me. I've never known that truth as much as I know it today. I've never known that truth as much as I appreciate it today. With that truth becoming such a reality in my life, I love Jesus more and more and more than I have ever loved him. This is love. We love him because he first loved us. 1 John 4, 19. Today, Wherever you are, 
And however you find yourself, I declare this truth to you. Jesus loves you. This I know, for the Bible tells me so. Little ones to him belong. They are weak, but he is strong. Yes, Jesus loves you. Yes, Jesus loves you. Yes, Jesus loves you. The Bible tells me so. Father, I pray for those that have heard this message on love today. I pray in the name of Jesus that the love of Jesus will so swamp and encamp about them that they will understand and know your love, Jesus, more than they have ever known it. Father, for people that maybe have never known you, may they know you and may they hear you and may they understand that love has come to visit them today and the love is God the Father, Jesus the Son, and even the Holy Spirit. And Father, even for those who have served you many, many years, I pray there will be a refreshing in their spirit of the love of the Lord Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus we pray. Amen. God bless you. Mm -hmm.